Hey guys, Thomas here with Circle H Cuba. Right behind me is the Shearwater booth at NEMA 2024 in Las Vegas. And I have a special treat for you. I actually have two Shearwater employees that are gonna go over 20 years of Shearwater experience and just basically how they went from an initial prototype to the very first device and all the way through to the most recent Petrol 3, Turn TX, Peregrine TX, Perdix 2, all the devices that we know and love and use today and kind of what goes into Shearwater's philosophy of making dive computers. So if you're interested in anything like that, stay tuned and for more DEMA content, make sure you check out the playlist that'll link down in the description below. Hey everyone, this is Joseph from Shearwater. I am the OEM rebreather customer support uh, specialist there. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the evolution of our dive computers. Come on. So our founder, uh, Bruce Fredrich, he had a very firm idea on how the computers should work. He was dissatisfied with the interface that uh, the current computers at the time had. Uh, so he decided to build his own uh, uh, prototype here. It was a rebuilding controller for a KISS MCCR. In important to notice there's a solenoid here, quite interesting. Oxygen intake and output, he could actually control the oxygen addition on his MCCR. This is quite an interesting uh, project that he did. And this was so good that people started to ask for computers, why don't you make a commercial product? This led to the Shearwater GF, our first computer that you could actually order and use. The idea is to always have a computer that is powerful, that is simple, unreliable, and that's been from day one. Uh, the interesting part of this is that Bruce was so interested in the uh, computer to human interface that he found a way to make this really look so good and be so simple to operate. If you notice, a new model has the same kind of idea for a display. It hasn't changed. Of course, the Petrol C has way more features, but the same idea as an interface still here because it's so simple to use and you want to have a very simple uh, interface when you have an issue. That, and those are about 20 years apart in models? So le le let's say that the GF is actually 20 years now. Okay. So uh, the prototypes are a little older than that. So maybe 23, 24 years. The evolution of this is always based on what can we add as a feature? What can we add uh, as, as a, maybe a color display, a way to, to make sim uh, the dive simpler? but without compromising the simple and without compromising power management and things like that. So it's important to keep the computer uh, with uh, a good power management so you can use the computer continuously. Just, you know, computers that last one hour don't do anything, but still maintaining a, a, a great interface. This is a Shearwater Predator. I would say this was the first item that really sold well and people started to get to know the company. The most impressive thing is if we compare to a modern display, it's an amazing quality display for something that's more than 15 years old. It's the first model that had a color display. This was actually quite important because you can have red warnings here and that will really pop out for a diver. And that's really important uh, for display sp specifically because Remember, most of these computers were used for technical diving most of the time. So technical diving has quite important warnings and stuff that you have to, to look into. And the, the color display really helped uh, with those. So if we kind of just look at the, the lineup here. So between the, the Shearwater GF 20, 20 ish years ago, you know, yep. early 2000s to going to the Petrol 3 that just came out recently. Obviously we have the, the turn. Turn, the Turn TX, the Perdix 2, oh. you know, the Turn just came out about six months ago. So Perdix 2 coming out just before that. We kind of have that same consistent look all the way through. Exactly. Of just so, easy usability, readability, easy two button interface, and then just kind of changing the format to the wrist mount versus, or the watch style, I guess, versus uh, the larger screen display. Exactly. I mean, yeah. we're trying to make the computers a little more accessible to the recreational uh, market. So they can, uh, you know, also have access to great computers. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. And I want to jump over to uh, Tim here in just a moment. Oh, hi. I'm Tim. I'm the technical product manager at Shearwater Research. Tell you a little bit about our computers and sort of our design philosophies. All of our computers are kind of broken up into two categories. We have like the square ones and the round ones. The square ones you'll be familiar with are for example, the Petrol 3, which is the rebreather controller on a bunch of different rebreathers you can buy. It's also available as a standalone. This computer is kind of the pinnacle, uh, the high end of what we make, uh, but it's mainly like existing 
because it's a rebreather controller still and rebreather monitor. The standalone is sort of a, an homage to the past. It does have a bigger screen than the uh, Perdix, which would be the next one down here. So that Perdix 2 has the exact same layout, the exact same interface, and that's very much on purpose. The idea is that the divers can get really used to what they expect to see on the screen, and it's not going to change on them. So what you see at the surface is what you're going to see underwater, and what you see in one computer to the next. So even if you go down to the Peregrine, this is in a recreational diving mode, but again, very consistent. The bottom rows work the same way on all the computers so that you can move between them. If you know one, it's easy to ladder up to the next one when you're ready for it, when you're ready to do that kind of diving. Uh, we try to make uh, the computers as accessible as possible to all divers. Um, some need these really high-end features, CCR modes, external oxygen sensor modes, and some just need regular air mode. So it's a balance between making it accessible but also making it you know, really intuitive and easy to use. On the round side of things, uh, we actually introduced the Tarek several years ago now. That's this guy here. And it is essentially uh, a Perdix in a watch form factor. And again, it was really important to us to have that consistent UI, still the same sort of bottom row, the compass kind of shows it well, but it has CCR support, the Trimix, all the things you need to be a serious technical diver in a watch form factor. It's not a smart watch, it's a dive computer, and that was really important to us in designing it because people have their, their Apple watches and their other, other smart watches that they prefer, and this is a dedicated dive instrument. Again, what you see on the surface is what you're gonna see on that dive. So at 100 meters, you're not trying to figure out how things work. You know, last year we brought out the uh, Turn and Turn TX as well. Again, this is a smaller form factor, but it's the same kind of watch style. This is in free dive mode right now. The watch ones have a free dive mode, which is I think underrated, but uh, available. And it's again, the same thing. You get that same feeling, exact same user interface. So when you're ready to go from one computer to the next, it's just really easy. You don't have to relearn it, reread the manual. Right, right. Yeah, consistency in design. I mean, you see it, like we just saw with uh, with Jose as well. So you have like even the original GF all the way through to now, we have that consistency in design. So for 20 plus years now, we're able to kind of have like, I'm a Shearwater diver, I know yeah. how these work and it, I'm getting, you I gotta know, know what I'm getting into and what I can make It was that. a classic saying of Bruce, who was the founder of Shearwater, you know, uh, 100 meters underwater in a shipwreck is not a place where you want to learn to read the manual. Design is the same. We don't want to make any radical changes. And it's something we think about when adding new features. Of course, there's things we could add and yeah, yeah. we have to really weigh how many people is this going to help? How many people is it going to make a safer, better diver? And for how many people is it just going to get in the way and confuse them? Because what do you need underwater fundamentally? Uh, a recreational diver needs uh, depth, dive time, NDL, and a few warnings, and that's kind of it, right? You add a lot of flexibility, uh, a lot of power with air integration, uh, compasses, like these are great, great features, but we do have to consider how we implement them in a way where they're gonna add the most benefit and not confuse people or take anything away. You'll notice there aren't any step counters in our dive computers. That isn't an accident. <laughs> so it, it's just a decision to make um, about sort of you know, do you want a dedicated dive instrument um, or do you want something that's a bit more flexible? And we just decided, you know, we, we make bespoke diving instruments and we do it well, and that's our plan to keep doing that. That makes perfect sense, yeah, thank you so much. Pleasure. So if you're interested in Shearwater, make sure you check out the videos that I have down like below, as well as shown up on the screen now of the Perdix 2, the Turn TX, the Peregrine TX, all of Shearwater's offerings there, and I'll have plenty more in the future as well. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll reach out to Shearwater for you. Make sure we get those answered as well for you. Thanks, Tim, appreciate Thanks. it.